sa Baguio City between 5 to 6 in the morning. At bago po natin talakayan ang ating uh, paksa sa umagang ito na pinamagatan kong December 25 DS Natales Solis and Victi sa salitang Latin The Birth of the Invincible or the Unconquered Sun. Mamaya po ay papaliwanag natin. Pati po natin ang ating mga lahat na tapakinig dito sa siyudad ng Baguio particular sa Rainbow Subdivision, kapatid na Carlos Garcia, sa buong probinsya ng Binguet, buong Cordillera Region, hanggang po dyan sa Abra, sa Noan Abra, kapatid na Miriam Tassis, sa Ilocos, kapatid na Dani Enriquez, at nais nice po nating acknowledge ang ating uh, co-sponsor, Brother Narciso Jun Kaugiran and his wife, Sister Tina Evita Kaugiran, at uh, sila po ang ating co-sponsors uh, dito sa radio and of course uh, YouTube channel ng ating Know Your Bible Program. Gusto ko rin po acknowledge ang love gifts na binigay ni kapatid na Ed and Sister Beulah Lauder dyan din po sa California, USA. Uh, at sila po ay may uh, love gifts sa atin sa ating radio broadcast and YouTube channel. Gusto ko rin po acknowledge si John Jeffrey na nagbigay rin po ng uh, contribution or donation sa ating Christian Magazine, Christian World Ministry at si Rose uh, De La Cruz na nagbigay din ng donation sa ating magazine uh, online Christian Magazine, Christian World Ministry at sa ating po mga listeners at viewers ang mga sermons po ng uh, Noe Bible Program Sa wikang Ingles ay pwede na pong i-download. Just go down, go to uh, www.christianworldministry.org at makikita nyo po yung mga outlines and you can download them. Ibigin natin pati ng ating mga kapatiran sa buong uh, La Union. Diyan po sa nagiliyan na ulit kapatid na Siri Hukar, Sister Pega Kulan, sa diyan po si kapatid na Jay Manungdo. Um, bangkira yan po sa isang lugar sa Pangasin, rather sa La Union mga kapatiran din sa Pangasinan area, of course dyan sa Magaldan, kapatid na Gina Manuel Flores ang congregation sa Magaldan mga kapatiran dyan and of course dyan sa ating mga kapatiran sa Lingayen Pangasinan, kapatid na Greg and Sister Luz Manuel sa Dumanadan congregation, kapatid na Hilda Manuel uh, and Jenny Manuel Flores, mga uh, kapatiran dyan, mga preachers, mga young people, magandang umaga po. Sa ating uh, kapatiran sa Cebu, ang aking sister Evelyn, kapatid na uh, Ruben Imperado, my brother-in-law, Neil Imperado, all the Imperados over there in uh, Cebu City. Mga kapatiran sa Samar, Leyte, parting Bacolod, Negros Oriental, Ra City, Capiz, Iloilo, Palawan. And of course, hanggang po sa Mindanao, mga kapatiran sa Golden Gate Congregation, Brother Terry Dennis, Art Madlaing, and of course, uh, James Kitoriano, at kanila po mga anchors dyan sa Angel Radio. Mga kapatiran din sa Canada, uh, the Colcols, the Altalascos, Cariagas, Bravos, and of course, mayro pang mga ibang kapatiran dyan. Uh, kapatid na Bernie de Guzman, nandiyan din po, aking niece na nasa Alberta, uh, Canada. Mga kapatiran din sa Texas, 
And then of course, uh, Jenna, kapatid na Jonathan Sareno, Henry Katig, uh, and uh, kapatiran sa Milan, Italy, si Anna Daniel, and the congregation over there. Yan po yung ating papagbati sa ating mga kapatiran sa buong Pilipinas uh, at sa ibang parte ng mundo. Gusto rin rin ating batin mga kapatiran sa India. And of course, we would like to greet our brothers and sisters and Africa. Napakarami po ang komunikasyon ng Churches of Christ dyan. We'll now go to our discussion this morning, brothers and sisters, on the subject, December 25. Yes, Natalis, Solis, and Victi, the birth of the unconquered or the invisible sun. Every year, the world, or the Christian world, celebrates December 25 as the birthday of Jesus, whose name in Hebrew is Yeshua, which uh, we consider, of course, the Savior of the world. Now, does the Bible really teach that December 25 was the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world? What does the Bible really say about this? Tinuturo ba ng Biblia na ang Panginoon sa Kristo ay pinanganak sa Disyembre 25? Ayon po sa mga salita at mga pahina ng Biblia. Ano po ang sinasabi ng Biblia? Alam mo po natin kung ano ang real and physical birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ sapagkat sinabi po ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo sa 1.8.32 You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Malalaman ninyo ang katotohanan at ang katotohanan ang siyang magpapalaya sa inyo. Hatin po natin yung ating discussion this morning, brothers and sisters, on three parts. Let's see the biblical account. We will study the secular account on the birth of Christ. And the last part of our lesson or discussion is on some of the lessons that we can learn and apply as Christians today with regards to the celebration of December 25 as the so-called birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we will go to the biblical account, brothers and sisters, on what day Jesus was born, according to the book of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 up to verse 20, mahaba po yan, hindi po natin mabasahin lahat yan, but I would like to emphasize that it's found in the book of Luke, complete account of uh, Jesus Christ, the circumstances of his birthday, is found in the book of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 up to verse 20 but we will not read all of that it says here in verse 8 brothers and sisters Luke chapter 2 verse 8 says that the shepherds were watching their flock on the night when Jesus was born ayon po sa Lucas kapitulo 2 talatang 8 si Cristo po ay pinanganak at nung siya ay pinanganak yung mga pastol ng mga tupa Cordero ay nasa labas po ng kanilang mga bahay at binabantayan nila ang kanilang mga tupa or sheep. So that's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 2. Verse 8. Yeah. The shepherds were out there and some people said that they were living out there or they were living outdoors or in uh, when Christ was born. And so, Ano po ginagawa nila doon sa labas? Well, they were living outdoors and they were also watching their flock at night when Jesus Christ was born. So, nung pinanganak si Kristo, ang mga pastol ay nasa labas ng kanilang bahay o tahanan at binabantayan nila ang kanilang mga tupa. So, yun po ang sinabi dito sa Lucas Kapitulo 2, Talatang 8. So, ano po ang ating conclusion o may bibigay na paliwanag tungkol sa bagay na yan sapagkat sabi doon, pinangarap ang Panginoon at ang mga pastol ay nasa labas ng kanilang bahay, binabantayan ang kanilang mga tupa sa araw ng tinatawag na kapanganakan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. Wala pong petya na binigay. Now, we would like to ask the question, was this a usual event in Bethlehem during December? Ito ba ay karaniwang nangyayari kapag Disyembre doon sa Bethlehem ng Udiya at ang buwan po ng Disyembre, equivalent po niya sa Hebrew, ang tawag nila doon ay Chislev. Well, Chislev or December during uh, those times in Bethlehem of Judea is usually cold and rainy. So malamig at umulan. 
Kaya pwede natin sagutin yung katanungan na ng panganak, ang Panginoong Soso Kristo, buwan pa ba ng Disyembre? So pagkat ayon dito sa Lucas 2.8, uh, ang mga pastol ay nasa labas, binabantay nila ang kanilang mga tupa. So balit, ayon po sa ating pananaliksi, ang buwan ng Disyembre or Chislev is usually cold and rainy. So it is not therefore possible that the shepherds would go out at night and would bring out their flock or their sheep also at night. So, it might be na hindi po December ang pecha. Now, let's go to the next month. The next month is January in our calendar, but the Jewish people would call it Tibet. And Tibet and Bethlehem of Judea during January or Tibet, it has the lowest temperature and the te temperature would drop at 8.33 degrees Celsius. Napakalamig na po yan. And according to uh, researchers, magkakaroon po ng snow sa mountainside. So mayroong rain, very cold, at mayroon ding yellow. So yun po ay buwan ng Disyembre at they call that Tibet in Hebrew. So, na-establish po natin na December and January ay umulan, pati na rin ay malamig at kumisan ay may snow or yellow. Now, let's go to the Old Testament account. Sabagat yung binasa po natin ay nasa New Testament. Balikan po natin mga kapatid at mga ibigan sa Old Testament. Ano po ang sinasabi sa Old Testament tungkol sa buwan ng Chislev or Desyembre? Well, we have a reference in the book of Ezra. Chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 13, we learn that Chislev or December which is the ninth month of the Jewish calendar, and on the 20th day, sinasabi doon sa Ezra chapter 10, verse 9 turn, the people were shivering because of the cold climate and the heavy rain. So ayon po sa Ezra 2, Kapitulo 10, 9 at 13, Disyembre po yun, uh, ika-24 uh, ara, 20th day, and ninth month, Chislev or December, nanginginig po yung mga tao dahil sa sobrang malamig at umuulan. So, po yung description doon sa Ezra. Kapitulo 10, talatang 9 at 13. At kung mapasahin pa rin po natin sa sulat sa Jeremiah, chapter 36, verse 22. Jeremiah 36, 22. Sabi doon sa Jeremiah, this was also in the month of Chislev. December pa rin po yun. So, winter time. And King Jehoiakim was in his winter house. So, winter house, ibig sabihin, taglamig. And he was sitting in front of a fireplace. Obviously, para mainitan siya. Warming himself. So, dito po sa Jeremiah 36, 22, nandun po si King Joachim, doon sa kanyang winter house, bahay niya kapag uh, malamig ng panahon doon sa Judea, at siya ay nasa harap, nakaupo sa harap ng isang fireplace, burning place, at doon ay nagpapainis. So, yun po ang sinasabi sa Lumang Tipan. We have two references, Ezra chapter 10, verse 9 and 13, and the other one is Jeremiah chapter 36, verse 22. Now, let's go to the second part of our lesson this morning, brothers and sisters. According to secular history, pag sinabi po natin secular history, outside of the Bible or New Testament, what does the secular history tell or tell us about December 25? Ano pong sinasabi ng secular history? Why was December 25 chosen as the birthday of Jesus? Bakit po pinili ang December 25 na kaarawan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo? Well, in the second century, pag sinabi natin second century, 200 years after Christ, the, Ro the Roman, Greco-Roman world started to celebrate the birth of the unconquered son on December 25. So ayon po sa kasaysayan, the Greco-Roman world, ang mundo ng panahon na yun na impluensya ng Griego at ng mga Romano, ay sinimulan po nilang celebrate ang 
December 25, pero hindi po birth of Jesus Christ. It was the birth of the unconquered son. And they call that in Latin, Solis and Victus. So, December 25, sinimulan po nilang celebrate sa buwan o sa araw ng December 25, pero hindi po Christmas Day or Jesus Christ's birthday. But it was the birth of the unconquered son, and which they call that in Latin, Solis and Victus, the unconquered son. Kaya Sol, yung salitang Sol po, yun yung haring araw. Ang mga ginagawa po ng mga Roman at mga Griego noon, ay sinasamba nila yung haring araw. Ang haring araw, the, the, uh, sabi natin sa solar system, ay the one controlling all the planets, sinamba po nila yun at ang tawag na doon sa uh, work for soul. Solis and Victus means the unconquered sun. Now what does uh, history further tell us? Well, there was an emperor by the name of Aurelius. And by the way, the word Aurelius comes from the word Aurora, and the word Aurora means the sun rising, or the rising sun, yung sunrise. So about 274 Anio Domini, or in the year of the Lord, Emperor Aurelius declared December 25 as the birthday of the unconquered sun. So nakaroon po ng hindi lang celebration, kundi dineclare, in announce, Sinabi ni Aurelius, ito ang birthday, kaarawan ng araw, haring araw, the birth of the unconquered sun, and they celebrated that in 274 Anio Domini on December 25. So, primero po, nakikita natin mga kaibigan at mga katid, na ang December 25 ay secular ang kanyang celebration. Ang ibig sabihin sa hindi po religious, hindi po konektado sa reliyon, pero konektado po sa reliyon ng mga pagano ng mga Romano at mga Griego. Hindi pa po siya Christian celebration. Well, it was during the time of Constantine the Great. Constantine, of course, Constantine became a Christian even uh, before his death. Hindi pa siya naging Christian, but he was already favoring the Christian religion. And in fact, he was the one who issue the edict of toleration. Siya po ang nagbigay ng kautusan na wag nang usigin ang mga Kristiyano noong kapanahonin niya. 300 years after Christ, sinabi niya wag nang usigin ang mga Kristiyano at mukhang talagang sincere sila sa kanilang pananampalataya at gagawin kong reliyon ng buong Imperio Romano. So he declared Christianity as the state religion and about 336 Anio Domini, Anio Domini means in the year of the Lord, Emperor Constantine replaced the pagan feast with Christian names. So anong ginawa ni Constantine? Pinalitan niyo pa yung mga piyesta ng mga pagano ng mga Romano at Griego at pinalitan niya sa pangalang Kristiyano. So yung ang conquered sun, which is celebrated on December 25, nagiging birthday ng ating Panginoong Maso Kristo kasi yun po ang pinakapopular na celebrasyon ng mga pagano mga Romanong Griego, December 25 po ay ginawa niya, the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ, December 25. Now, ano po yung motivo? What was the purpose of Constantine for declaring December 25 as the birth of Jesus Christ and favoring the Christian religion and even making it a state religion of the people during his time? 300 years after Christ, na yun ha, tatlong daang taon nang minigyan ng pabor ni Constantine ang Kristyanismo sa kapanahonan niya. Ang reason po ay nagkaroon po siya ng parang panaginip at sa kanyang panaginip nakita niya yung sign of the cross at sa Latin sabi doon in hoc signo vince ang ibig sabihin by the sign you shall conquer so because of that uh, dream ni Constantine nagkaroon po siya ng tinatawag na favor binigyan niya ng favor ang Christian religion and made it even the state religion so, constant reason, brothers and sisters, actually, was to weaken the established pagan celebration by Christianizing them. 
in line with uh, his uh, desire or the favor that he gave to the Christian religion. Ibig sabihin po, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, ang dahilan kung bakit pinabura ng Constantine, emperador na Constantine ng Christian religion, was he wants the pagan feast to be uh, to fade out of uh, picture. Namawala na yung pagan celebration and so, pinagpapalitan niya po yung mga pagan feast sa pangalang Christian. And of course, one of them was the December 25 which he made it as the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's go to the next account. Uh, we will uh, discuss about Sextus Julius Africanus. Maybe mahaba po yung pangalan niya. Ito pong si Sextus Julius Africanus was a Roman historian and also became a Christian. So isa po siyang manalalaysayal na Romano na naging Kristiyano at inilagay niya yung petsa ng conception of Christ. Pinaglihis si Yeso Cristo sa Marso 25. And if you count nine months later, it would fall on December 25. So siya po yung parang religious calculation niya or reasoning kung bakit na naging December 25. Yun po yung kanyang explanation. Si Sextus Julius Africanus, dahil daw ang conception ng Panginoon sa Kristo, March 25, at yun din ang araw ayon sa kanya na nilalang ng Panginoon Diyos ang buong Sunday Tigan, the whole universe. So, nine months later, after March 25, is of course, December 25. So, kaya sabi niya, ang kapanganakan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo was in December 25. Now, previous to the celebration of uh, the Solis and Victus or the birth of the unconquered son, mayroon pong piyesta na nauna dyan. Ang tawag po nila dyan ay Saturnalia. Saturnalia was a feast in honor of Saturn, the so-called god of agriculture. At during this time, it would usually be observed from December 17 to 22 sa, of course, sa Roman calendar. So yung Saturnalia po, isa pong piyesta na parangal kay Saturn, god of agriculture, at uh, ito ay ginagawa December 17 to 22, and this feast was characterized with gift, giving, and wild parties. So meron silang bigayan ng mga regalo, at nakakaroon din ng mga kainan, at ang mga servants and masters nakakasama pong nagkakainan at kumakain siya nagkakaroon sila ng piyesta so it was the feast before kaya doon siguro nakuha natin yung tinatawag nilang gift giving and parties during December especially when people celebrate Christmas now on the ninth, in the 9th century pag sinabi natin 9th century 900 years after Christ so between 900 to 1000 Anio Domini in the 9th century, Anio Domini, Christmas became an official Christian festival in Western churches to fully persuade pagan subjects to become Christians. Ulitin ko po. Nung dumating po ang ikasyam na siglo, 9th century, between 900 to 1000 AD, ang Christmas po, in quotation marks, ay naging official na celebration ng Western Churches. Pag sinabi natin Western Churches, kalama po ang Roma, Italy, Asia Minor. Pero doon po sa parte ng uh, Constantinople, Turkey, uh, East, ibang uh, Antioch, and of course Egypt, Alexandria, iba po yung araw na sinicelebrate nila, March, actually January 6. So, 9th century, Christmas became an official Christian festival in Western Churches, and one of the purposes of this was to fully persuade and convince pagan subjects to become Christians. So, marami pa pong hindi naging Kristiyano noon. So, actually po, nagbaliktad. Primero, ang Kristiyano yung, yung mga inuusik. Pero during this time, lumakas po ang Iglesia, the Church of the Lord, in quotation mark, the Roman Church became so powerful, so yung hindi po naniniwala sa kay Kristo, hindi nagiging membro ng Roman Church, or the Roman Catholic Church, Universal Church. Sila po yung hinuhuli at yung hindi sumasama at naniniwala, ang iba po, pinapatay. So, ganun po ang nangyari during this time, 900 to 1,000 years, and of course, lumalayang during the Middle Ages, before Martin Luther 
enter into the sea. Uh, Didiscuss din po natin yan later on. Now, my new brothers and sisters, gusto ko lang po sabihin sa inyo, that the word Christmas is a misnomer. Pag sinabi po natin misnomer, hindi po angkop na pangalan. Because when we say Christmas, which came from an old English word, Christus Masse, which means the mass, the sacrifice of Christ, and not the birth of Christ. So, actually, the word Christmas, mali po ang terminology. Pag sinabi mong Christmas, is the mass of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ, the death of Christ, and not the birth of Christ. So, medyo hindi po ako ang kanilang ibinigay na pangalan sa halip na birth of Christ naging the death of Christ. Christus Masse means the sacrifice, the offering, or the death of Christ. Kamatayan ni Kristo at hindi kapanganakan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. Now let's go to some practical lessons to learn and to apply today as Christians. Tayo pong nagsasabi na tayo mga Kristiyano. Lalong lalo na yung nagsasabi na sila ay bumalik na sa New Testament Christianity. Ang Kristyanismo ng kapanahon ng mga apostles, the early Christians, the first century Christian, ang mga Kristiyano ng unang siglo. Ano po ang mabibigyan natin ng observasyon at leksyon? Number one, the first century Christians or the so-called New Testament Christians did not observe Christmas. Ulitin ko po, ang mga Kristiyano ng unang siglo, kapanahonan ni Apostol Pablo, Apostol Pedro, ang kapanahonan ni Apostol Juan, yun po yung early Christian, New Testament Christian, the first century Christians. Hindi po nila ino-observe, hindi po nila sinisilibrate, hindi po sila nag-observe ng December 25 as Christmas. Lalo na, wala pa yung term na Christmas noon. So, kasi, dahil, ano po ang dahilan kung bakit hindi nila ginawa yun? Well, there was no command, there was no example, there was no inference that can be found in the New Testament. So sa bagong tipan, New Testament, wala pong utos, wala pong halimbawa o ehemplo, at wala pong suggestion o suggestion na ang mga unang Kristiyano, kapanahon ni Apostol Pablo, Pedro, at Apostol Juan, na inaalaala nila ang pagkapanganak ng Panginoon sa Kristo. They did not observe, they did not remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ at hindi po araw ng Disyembre. Kasi nga, hindi po sinabi sa Biblia ang exact na pecha kung kailan talaga ipinaganap ang ating Panginoon Kristo, ang pecha. Now, what was commanded in the New Testament brothers and sisters to the early Christians, to the New Testament Christians, the first century Christian, katulad ni Paul, ni Pedro, ni Juan, ano po ang inutos sa kanina? Well, they were told, if you will read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 26, doon po sinabi ni Apostol Pablo nang si Kristo ay bago siya uh, arrested. The night before he was he was uh, arrested and then later on crucified, yung last supper na sinasabi na communion, Christ commanded the apostles, his disciples, closest disciples, yung 12, wala na po si Judas, umalis si Judas pagkatapos. So Christ said, this is my body and leaven bread, walang alibadura, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. So yung physical body po, yung tinuturo niya, yung tinapahinig mismo yung katawan niya, nakakainin. Although mayroon nagtuturo na ang physical na katawan ni Cristo ang kinakain. We'll discuss that in the future. And then sabi ni Cristo, inumin niyo rin ang kupa. Alam mo na kupa yung grape juice. Ubas which is poured for you for the remission or forgiveness of your sins. So yung tinapay na walang libadura at ang ubas symbolize the body and the blood of Christ. So sabi ni Christo, you do this in remembrance of me. When you do this, you are also proclaiming the Lord's coming. Sabi ni Apostle Pablo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. So dalawa po ang dahilan at ang inuto sa mga apostles ang communion, ang Lord's Supper, and sometimes they call it the Eucharist, 
which is to remember the death of Christ and also to proclaim His coming or return to earth. So, ang kanya pong inutos dito sa 1 Corinto Kapitulo 11, 23 hanggang 26 na araw po doon sa Matthew Kapitulo 26 at iba pang referensya sa New Testament. Sinabi ng Panginoon kay Apostol Pablo at sa mga Apostol, itong tinapay at itong katas ng ubas na simbolo ng aking katawan at sa aking dugo, gawin nyo ito as open as you can. At ang example po na ginawa ng mga apostoles, mga early Christian, Acts 20 verse 7 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, pag-aaralan din po natin Richard, was being done every Sunday or every Lord's Day. Ito yung araw ng linggo. And it is to proclaim and to remember the death and the resurrection of Christ. And at the same time, ito rin po ay pag-a-announce sasabihin na darating at babalik sa pananong sa Kristo. Okay, yun po ang pangalawang leksyon. Number two, no, number three lesson. Sabi niya po sa Pablo sa Roma, Kapitulo 12, Talatang 2. This is what he said in Romans 12, 2. The Apostle Paul wrote, Do not conform yourselves to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve the will of God acceptable will of God. So ano sabi ng Pusol Pablo? Ang mga Kristiyano ngayon, at kahit noon, ay huwag umayon sa mundong ito. Sabi nga ni Apostle John, Love not this world, for, for what is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, yun po yung hindi dapat mahalin sa mundo. Love not the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. First John chapter 2. So, sabi na po sa Pablo, Romans 12, do not conform yourselves with the pattern of this world. Huwag tayong sumang-ayon, huwag tayong umayon sa forma, sa mga ginagawa ng mudong ito. Kung hindi sabi niya, baguhin natin ang ating mga pag-iisip. We transform. Magbago tayo sa pamamagitan ng pagbabago ng ating mga pag-iisip para malaman natin ang kalooban ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Yun po sinabi na po sa Pablo. That's the third lesson. Number four lesson. Sabi na po sa Pablo pa rin. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Ito po ay hango sa Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Sulat po na Isaiah. And the Apostle Paul quoted this in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Sabi na doon, Come ye out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Lumabas kayo sa kanila at kayo ay dapat maiwalay. Parang isolation yan. Maiwalay. Well, the idea here is that Christians are called saints. Romans chapter 1, verse 3 and other verses. Sabi na po sa Pablo, to the saints that are in Rome. So yung mga Kristiyano po ay mga santo. Mga banal. What is the meaning of the word santo or santos? Well, the word santos, which means to sanctify, to set apart, and dedicate it. So, yung mga santo, mga banal, na ihiwalay mula sa mundong ito. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, the Apostle Paul said, You have been separated and transferred from the kingdom of the world, this world, into the kingdom of His dear Son. So, kayo ay nalabas, sa kariyan ng mundong ito, which is controlled by Satan, at kayo ay inilipat sa kariyan ng kanyang mahal na anak. So in other words, Christians are to be separated from this world. Come ye out from among them and be ye separate. Yun po ibig sabihin ng salitang santo. So, 2 Corinthians 6, 7, and yun po ang leksyon na sinabi ni Apostle Pablo, and he quoted that from the book of Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Finally, Lesson. Do not let anyone judge you. Ito po may babasa natin sa Colossians 2.16. Sabi ni Apostle Pablo sa wikang English, Paul wrote, Do not let anyone judge you by what you drink, by what you eat, and with regards to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. Colossians 2.16. Sabi ni Apostle Pablo, 
Huwag niyong pabayaan o pahintulutan na kayo ay hukman, na kayo ay tuksuhin, na kayo ay bigyan ng judgment, na kayo ay hukumla ng tao, atulan, tungkol sa inyong kinakain, sa inyong iniinom, at tungkol naman sa mga piyesta na tungkol sa reliyon, religious festival. Of course, inutukoy niya dito yung mga piyesta ng mga audio. Pero actually, the idea is also applicable to pagan feast or Roman feast or Greek feast or any kinds of feast of pagans and judge you because you do not practice them. So sabi niya po sa Pablo, huwag niyong papayaan, huwag niyong payagan na kayo ay katulan tungkol sa inyong kinakain, inyong iniinom, at tungkol sa mga piyesta na inoobserve nyo at ginagawa ninyo. Because these are all a shadow of the things to come, the Apostle Paul said in Colossians chapter 2, verse 17. So, ano pong ibig sabihin niya? Na, dahil hindi natin ginagawa, sasabihin niya ng ibang tao, uh, yan ay mga masyado faithful sa sinabi ng Panginoon. Well, of course, alam niyo ang Panginoon Diyos, mga kapatid, at mga iba, very strict to yan, ang Panginoon. Example, panahon ni Moses, sabi ng Panginoon kay Moses, Moses, nagdareklamo yung mga tao, walang tubig, pumunta ka doon sa lugar na ito, may bato, kausapin mo yung bato. Sabi ni Moses, yes Lord, pero sa galit ni Moses sa mga Israelitas, hindi niya po sinausap ang bato. Hindi niya lang kinausap ang bato. Pinalo niya pa ang bato at lumabas nga naman ng tubig. Pero nagalit ang Panginoon. Bakit? Hindi niya sinunod ang Panginoon. Sabi ng Panginoon, kausapin mo lang ang bato. Ang ginawa ni Moses, kinausap niya nga, pinalo niya pa. So he added something to the Word of God. So yun po ang mali. So hindi po pwede, according to Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19, we cannot add, we cannot subtract from the Word of God. Do exactly as what God said. And that's what Noah did when he built the ark. Na-discuss na po natin yan sa ibang mga lectures. Sinasabi ko lang po, in relation to our lesson this morning. Now, as we conclude our lesson this morning, brothers and sisters, maraming po salamat sa inyong pakikinig. At nawa, sinusundan nyo ito hanggang sa uling party sapagkat napakalaga po nito. May iba po, hanggang kalahati lang, hindi nila sinusundan lahat hanggang sa likod. Ang importante po mga kapatid at mga ibet, tapusin natin yung pakikinig. Kung mayroon mo kayong pinanood na YouTube, tapusin nyo rin po. Sapagat ang mensahe po ay hanggang sa huli at ang nasa huli, usually, ang mas mahalaga at importante. Concluding thoughts or ideas, brothers and sisters, sa ating leksyon, December 25, which we call the birth of the unconquered sun god, Natales and Victis. Natales, Solis, and Victi. Yung pong sinasabi natin kanina, ang kapanganakan. Or rather, the birth of the invincible son, the conquered son, Natales, Solis, and Victi. Natales, yes, Solis, and Victi. Alright, the birth of the unconquered son. Yes, Natales, Solis, and Victi is the birth of the unconquered son. So God gave Jesus Christ to this world as our Lord and Savior. Thus, we have to believe in Him and be baptized to be saved and of course, to gain eternal life. Ang conclusion po, mga kaibigan at mga kapatid, binigay po ng Panginoong Diyos ang ating Panginoong Diyos sa Kristo, His begotten Son. Kaya dapat sumampalatayat na sa Kanya, maniwala sa Kanya, at magpapautismo para sa kapatawaran ng ating kasalanan at pagtanggap sa Kanyang Espiritu Santo. At kung tayo ay pagpapatuloy, ibibigay niya po sa atin ang corona ng buhay. John 3.16, of course, is popular passage. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mark 16.16, He who believes in His baptized shall be saved. Marami pa pong steps of salvation na sinasabi sa Biblia. We have to confess the name of Christ. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. We have to repent of our sins and be baptized, Acts 2.38. And we have to be faithful until death. Ayon po sa Apocalypse, Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2, 
Now is the day of salvation. It's not tomorrow, it's not later, but it's today. So, naitindihan po natin yung misahe. Kung tayo naitindihan, we have to accept the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ for He said in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. Yan po ating misay, mga kaibigan na po atin sa programang Noe Bago Program, alamin ang yung Biblia. Let's have a short prayer before we end our lesson. Alright. Manalangin po tayo, mga kaibigan na pagbatid sa ating pagtatapos sa ating leksyon sa magang ito, ikatlong linggo ng Desyembre 2021. Our Lord God, our Father in Heaven, we thank You for the message. We thank You, Lord, for Thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross of Calvary. And as we remember Him uh, anytime and any day, not only on December 25, but every time in our lives, we remember Him and thank Him for His sacrifice and for His love to all humanity. Bless us, O Lord, and continue to guide us and continue continue also to cleanse us from our sins. We pray for all the viewers and we pray for all the hearers of this program. Bless them, O Lord, so that thy truth and thy words will find roots in their minds and in their hearts. In Christ we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Never shall his promise fail. God is victorious. on high his power proclaim heaven on the earth and creation